Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining the Coalition of Blacks Against Breast Cancer on our day of giving, giving back and fighting cancer together. I'm Denise Johnson, Executive Director of the Coalition. And we have been celebrating this year 11 years of existence in supporting women, black women, as survivors of breast cancer. I am a breast cancer survivor of four years, so you can imagine this organization means the world to me. The mission of the organization is to provide personal support to survivors, also to educate the black community on the importance of breast cancer screening, diagnosis, treatment, and most of all, most importantly, I think, survival, because we do survive this cancer given the things that we need to do in order to keep us healthy. Today, you are going to hear from several members of the coalition. You'll hear from the founders, survivors, supporters, and many of our educational speakers who come to our sessions once a month, whether in person or now uh, over Zoom. So I invite you to relax and also enjoy inspiration and entertainment for the show that's planned ahead. I am very much pleased to introduce our moderator for the day. Everyone in Phoenix absolutely knows Susan Casper, ABC Channel 15, Sonoran Living. Welcome and thank you so much Susan. Oh, thank you, Denise, for that warm introduction. And hello to all of you. I trust you're in good health and spirits. It is truly an honor to serve as your virtual moderator for this very special program on behalf of an extraordinary organization. Founded in 2010 by a dedicated group of people, the Coalition of Blacks Against Breast Cancer has been serving this community for the past 11 years and doing it so courageously. Tonight, during the program, you are going to hear from cancer specialists, clinicians, educators, community partners, and survivors. They are going to share why CBBC is not only important to them, but important to our community. And with that said, it is my pleasure to present two individuals who shared the vision for this organization. Please welcome its founders, Dr. Michelle Halyard and Mr. Marion Kelly. The Coalition of Blacks Against Breast Cancer, we got our starting or our beginning very early uh, during the meeting of the Sigma Pi Phi Gamma Mu Boulay's hosting of the Western region. Gamma Mu was one of our founders. Phoenix Chapter of the Lynx, as well as Mayo Clinic, were also founders. The Coalition of Blacks Against Breast Cancer was put together out of community need to educate the community about breast cancer and also to provide support for black breast cancer survivors. As we have put this coalition together, we asked the survivors what it is that they wanted and needed. And what they said was, we need a place where we can come together on a regular basis and help others understand what it means to survive breast cancer and how we do that. And so we've done that through two efforts. One way is by establishing a support group that also serves as a ambassador outreach group to the communities in which we live, largely through a faith-based initiative. Many black breast cancer survivors have said that they don't see anybody else that looks like them with breast cancer. We don't often talk about breast cancer, and so one of the taglines of CBBC is, share your story. Our breast cancer survivors that are involved with the group educate others that you can be a survivor of breast cancer. You can not only survive, but you can thrive but early detection, and if you do have breast cancer, early treatment are keys. The Coalition of Blacks Against Breast Cancer is a group not just for the survivor, but for the caregiver, for the family member, or anyone who's interested in supporting the survivor. And we do this outreach in order to reduce the disparities in outcomes of breast cancer survivors. Ladies and gentlemen, I trust we all believe music is respite for the weary. Here to entertain us tonight is a very talented musician. Please welcome to the stage on his violin, Mr. Bruce Kirkwood. Mm -hmm.
thank you for entertaining us tonight, Bruce. That was lovely. Well, we all know organizations doing incredible work must have supportive partners in order to continue their mission and vision. CBBC is so grateful to its sponsors who will come now to convey why they support the work of CBBC. It is now my pleasure to introduce Reverend Dr. Terry Mackey, pastor of Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church. He will come now to give us words of encouragement and inspiration. Good day to you. What a plump, pleasing pleasure it is for me to offer words to you for such an auspicious occasion. For almost 100 years, the Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church has been a church in the heart of the community, keeping the community at heart. This year, our thematic thrust is that we are still standing, even through the midst of this pandemic, and we are still striving. We're striving upwardly in our relationship with God. We're striving inwardly to strengthen the members of our congregation. And we're striving outwardly to continue to be a blessing to those in this community. And as a church, we could think of no better way to strive outwardly than partnering with the coalition of Blacks Against Breast Cancer. Because we believe that cancer does not have the last word, but God has the last word. Because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And we ask God's choicest blessings upon you today as you give hope, help, and healing to the people and residents of Phoenix, Arizona. I extend God's choicest blessings to you this year and the years to come. May God's peace be with you forever and always. God bless. As CBBC was founded 11 years ago, two black organizations were part of the discussion who understood the significance of addressing breast cancer in the black community and became founding partners. Phoenix chapter of the Lynx Incorporated and Sigma Pi Phi fraternity Gamma Mu Boule. Here tonight to present community partners and CBBC is Brittany Williams. I joined the Coalition of Blacks Against Breast Cancer because this issue, in my opinion, is paramount for young African-American women and ensure that you are seeking medical attention as necessary. I think we all know someone who is impacted by you know, breast cancer. For me, it was my grandmother who passed away in 2008 and my aunt who, um, I believe she had two bouts with breast cancer. And it almost creates a fear in you because you see the, their struggle, you see how hard they fight. My membership and participation in CBBC is really about raising awareness in young black women that this is something we need to care about. This is something that needs to be at the forefront of our mind. As young black women, I think it's our responsibility to go out there and educate other black women that this is a treatable disease, that we need to do our part in ensuring that we are not disproportionately impacted by this disease, that we are not more likely to die from this disease, that we too deserve the opportunity to be treated. As a people, we have to take ownership of educating ourselves and raising awareness among our peers to ensure that this message gets out. The message that this is a treatable disease and we have to do our part in order to ensure that we are seeking the care that's needed and performing our self-breast exams to ensure that this treatment happens. I'm not a survivor of breast cancer, but my goal is that what I do as a part of CBBC what I do in generally educating my peers will increase the number of survivors that I do know. And now we will hear from two women who exhibit the perseverance and strength. They are true warriors. They are breast cancer survivors. Greetings everyone. My name is Panita and I'm a one year breast cancer survivor. I was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer in August of 2019 that resulted in nine months of active treatment including chemotherapy, surgery, and radiation. 
as well as an addition of physical therapy. You know, when I think back to the phone call early one morning from my primary care physician, advising me of my positive biopsy, when I think about seeing the oncologist, the surgeon, the radiologist, the physical therapist, when I think of all the treatment days, and just being in that space of the unknown, I still feel some trauma. Nonetheless, going through something means coming from something. And where I was prior to diagnosis, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, is not where I am today. Because I went through something, I'm now on the other side of cancer. And I value where I am today. In the process of going through, I found CBBC. A church member who knew of my diagnosis texted me about it. I immediately researched the organization and found the website. I tell you, I think I looked at every video I could bring up. Those videos were so helpful, insightful, and informative. In fact, I went to the next meeting, and it was there we had a conversation about a subject matter that inevitably helped me to make an informed decision about my own treatment. I am so grateful to have found what I call the best kept secret in Arizona when I needed it. Black women, the stats say one in eight women is diagnosed with breast cancer in this U.S. of A. Unfortunately, I was one in eight. You may have already been one and you may be a future one. This is why I ask you to make your best financial contribution to support this very unique and needed organization for black women going through breast cancer, not only here in Arizona, but across the nation. Since meeting online, we now have women calling in from all parts of the country. That's how valuable CBBC is. Please support this organization. Every dollar helps. And for this, thank you. Hi, my name is Sandra Tinsley and I'm a two-time breast cancer survivor. My most recent battle with breast cancer was right at the beginning of COVID and I have to say I was really scared because I thought I wouldn't be able to get that support from CBBC since everything kind of shut down. However, CBBC was on point and they did a quick pivot and offered everything via Zoom. So we still had all of our medical professionals giving us advice on things and just enlightening us on what's going on. We had our fitness gurus. We had so much that they offered and even makeup tips and makeup delivered to my doorstep to help me look a little bit better and feel better. So uh, CBBC has been more than a support group for me. It's just been my lifeline navigating through cancer. I thank them. I appreciate them. And I want you or whoever sees this to help support them and keep on doing the good work they're doing. Mwah. Thank you so much, survivors, for your strength and for sharing your story with us tonight. It has truly inspired us all. And up next, we're gonna hear from Angela Allen and Dr. Christopher Pullins. They are representing the West Valley tonight. They are here to enlighten us on all of the work CBBC is doing in their community. Hi, I'm Dr. Christopher Pullins. And I'm Dr. Angela Allen. We are co-directors of the health ministry here at Antioch Church of God in Christ, where the pastor is Jonathan E. Logan. Our relationship with the Coalition of Blacks Against Breast Cancer started about seven years ago. Yeah, seven years ago. We invited them to be guests of our Summer Health Series, which we have on an annual basis. And unbeknownst to us, some of our members would go on to have their own journeys with breast cancer and also became members of CBBC as a result. In addition, myself and Dr. Allen also participated and attended some of the Sunday sessions in a downtown location where they would have sessions to talk about breast cancer in particular. Because of the breadth and the width of geographic locations here in the valley, it became apparent quickly that the support that was given by CBBC would be needed all over the valley. And so some members who lived in the West Valley made it 
difficult to get to these sessions because of the geographic dis distances. There was some discussion at that time of potentially starting a West Valley extension of the CBBC. And based off the relationship that Dr. Allen and myself had with CBBC and their participations here in our Summer Hill series, it was thought that it may be advantageous to have a West Valley Extension location here at Antioch Church of God in Christ. So after speaking with our pastor, Dr. Logan, who was readily enthusiastic about this relationship, he opened the doors. And so as a result, in 2019, we were able to have three sessions here at Antioch. Unfortunately, as you know, in 2020, the pandemic hit and everything was shut down. And so we went virtual on all of those sessions going forward. But there are plans as things are lightening up that we will meet again here in the West Valley. And I would have to say that even though we've gone virtual, uh, that has been a successful program. Not only has members of our church participated in the West Valley uh, CBBC, but also members who are, have been members for CBBC for some time was very happy to hear that we were actually establishing a West Valley chapter. Many of us know that the, according to the American Cancer Society, breast cancer is the leading cause of cancer or death in some cases for women. And so I think it's very important that with CBBC, one of the things that I really appreciate and the fact that it impacted those who have had breast cancer was the fact that it made others aware of getting mammograms. It also allowed others to be aware of not being afraid to share their stories. And also it gave them support beyond their physician. It's allowed others to support them because of not only their journey through breast cancer, but also their family member's journey. So I think our program has been very successful. Um, we have been very supportive and we've embedded it into our uh, Summer Health Series. Every year we have actually talked about breast cancer and other types of cancers as well. Please welcome back one of CBBC's co-founders, Marion Kelly. The Coalition of Blacks Against Cancer needs your support. In order to build this organization, we cannot do it without you. We're looking for founders level donors at $1,000 per person. That will help us to establish the very groundwork that needs to be done to create the kind of organization that you and I can be proud of. We're also looking for supporting level members of the organization. And those are $500 donations to the Coalition of Blacks Against Cancer. The Coalition of Blacks Against Breast Cancer has gotten 11 years on us. So men, we wanna to appeal to you directly or to those who love them. Please donate today. You can find the links at the bottom of this screen to make your contribution. If it's $1,000 or $500, that's great. But we want you to give what you're capable of. It's not about equal giving, it's equal sacrifice. I've always had a warm spot for healthcare disparities. We are fortunate in breast imaging radiology where we actually get to go to an off-site um, where we get to work with patients from underserved areas, including Maricopa County, um, Latina patients that are either uninsured, um, just a, a large immigrant patient population, and um, I just truly love those days going there. It's different, um, and it just feels really rewarding. And so Dr. Halliard mentioned that um, this organization exists, and having trained myself at Emory, um, which is a large black patient population, and just used to that, um, I felt very excited and energized by it. And so ultimately, I was fortunate to be able to visit on one occasion, met the warm survivors, friendly people, um, was able to kind of do a little bit of education piece about breast cancer screening, but also really helped me um, remember why I'm here why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, the community engagement was beautiful. And ever since then, I've participated in events if and when the opportunity arises. It's just a, in my opinion, very welcoming group. Um, 
I myself personally am of an immigrant background, so I was born in London, my family's from India, and so I find that personally community really um, helps me get revived. And so when I see people come together for the common cause, sharing stories, survivorship stories, um, symptoms, it, just being able to know that you're not alone is, is huge for me, and just kind of being able to see that on a regular basis helps me remember why we do what we do day in, day out, and that there's a patient on the other side of the image in my you know, analogy of life. So, I tend to have a very positive outlook on it, just realizing that they have a, a long journey ahead of them. And ultimately, we know that the outcomes tend to be pretty favorable in the breast cancer space, thank goodness, due to um, treatments and then pre-treatment, pre-cancer tr or surgical treatments nowadays, um, radiation therapy, et cetera. So I think that Although we have this optimistic view, I also let them know they're not alone. And so these groups, these community groups and um, friendships and alliances and just for me personally, knowing that others have gone through it and how they've overcome it is helpful. So I tend to remind patients that, especially in our setting here, you know, that there are experts that do this. They do this day in, day out, and that they'll treat you as an individual patient. We tend to, um, here at Mayo Clinic at least, we do tumor boards. And so we look at the patient from a social standpoint. We're looking at them from a medical standpoint, oncology, radiation oncology. You're treating the whole patient. It's not just the small cancer. And so these multidisciplinary groups where I have the opportunity to meet and work with the oncologist and the radiation oncologist and the radiologist and the pathologist. I mean, it is very multidisciplinary care at its best. Best. And so just letting the patients know that the experts will take care of that part of it. And for them, the best thing they can do is just kind of find the support systems that they need and have faith in the system that to be educated, informed, ask the right questions, but also to kind of breathe and realize and, and know what, where their part is in terms of the, the care process. When uh, the Coalition for uh, of Blacks Against Breast Cancer began, uh, I had the opportunity to uh, attend meetings of the group from time to time. I always found it so inspiring uh, to meet with the members of the coalition. Uh, you know, this is a group of women and their spouses and significant others who are dedicated to making survivorship in breast cancer as a uh, beautiful and as uh, um, rewarding as they can. And they, they do that, the coalition uh, members do that in a way that's very inspiring to me. There's support and caring for one another, a sisterhood, uh, so to speak, that develops uh, between all the members. And there's the opportunity uh, to learn uh, with uh, the programs that uh, Dr. Halyard and Marion Kelly put together uh, with speakers who uh, come in with new information for the group. Uh, these are very enriching and rewarding experiences for the members of the group, but also for somebody like me who's uh, watching from the outside as an interested uh, party, somebody who takes care of patients with breast cancer. It's extremely heartwarming and gratifying to me to see how the community comes together uh, to support one another, to support every member. The most important message that I can provide to every patient with a new breast cancer diagnosis is that they have an illness which is survivable. Again and again and again, I see women coming in with that new diagnosis, imagining only one thing, imagining that they are gonna die of cancer. Death from breast cancer is actually relatively rare, thankfully, relatively rare. I'm not trying to say that women don't lose their lives to breast cancer. Tragically, that happens every day. And my practice has a number of women in it who are losing their lives or will lose their lives to breast cancer. However, the vast majority of women diagnosed with breast cancer today will survive their cancer. When I bring that up with patients I'm meeting for the first time, they're often shocked and, and seem unable to believe what I'm telling them. 
one of the r real powers of the Coalition of Blacks Against Breast Cancer is that a woman who's newly diagnosed with breast cancer can meet a group of survivors who look like her and have the same emotions and have the same ex experiences in life uh, that she has had. So that's a very, very moving and powerful way in which the Coalition of Blacks Against Breast Cancer can help that woman with the new diagnosis. When I meet uh, a black woman with a new diagnosis of breast cancer, I want to make sure that she leaves my office with a pamphlet in her hand that describes the Coalition of Blacks Against Breast Cancer, gives all the contact information that she needs to join the group. Because I know that once she's in that sisterhood, uh, she's going to be doing so much better than she would all by herself. Okay. It's really a privilege for me uh, to be associated in the way I am with a Coalition of Blacks Against Breast Cancer. I never miss an opportunity to attend a meeting when I'm invited. That will always be true. Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Halliard. I'm a co-founder of the Coalition of Blacks Against Breast Cancer and also a radiation oncologist at Mayo Clinic specializing in breast cancer. October, as you know, is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and I want to salute all the breast cancer survivors who are fighting so hard and living their life to the fullest. I'd also like to thank the supporters of the breast cancer patients who have devoted their lives to making sure that their loved ones succeed against this disease. I'd also like to honor those who have passed away from breast cancer and we hold them near and dear in our hearts. So what I'd like to do is just take a couple of minutes in talking about breast cancer facts and figures and giving you some tips that I hope will be helpful. One in eight women will develop breast cancer in her lifetime. But it's important to realize that men can develop breast cancer too, particularly men with a strong family history of breast cancer. Many women feel that one has to have a family history of breast cancer to develop it, and that's not true. Only about five to 10% of women who are diagnosed with breast cancer have a genetic component or family history that contributes to that development. Generally, breast cancer develops in ages 55 or older, but particularly black women may be more at risk of developing breast cancer in an earlier age because they develop triple negative breast cancer, which is a form that can be more aggressive and occur in a younger age. So for those of you who are wondering what can you do to protect yourself, to be more on top of things as it relates to breast cancer, early detection and early diagnosis is the key. So I want to give you some tips about what to do related to breast self-exam. So I always tell my patients, as well as anyone who will listen to me, that it is really important to know your body. And that includes examining your breast regularly. So what I suggest is that you stand in the mirror and look and see, have there been any changes in your breast? Are there any changes in the size of the breast? For example, is one larger than the other? Is one nipple pulling in? We call that nipple inversion. Does one breast seem swollen? Is there a change in the color of the breast, such as red or purple, or is the skin thickened or swollen? All of these should prompt evaluation by your healthcare provider. When you have changes in your breast, it doesn't mean that it's breast cancer, but it does warrant evaluation. It's also important to understand what your breasts feel like so that if there's any change, you can seek medical attention. So most people think that breast cancer might be a hard lump or a pee in the breast or something of that nature, but it's important to know that breast cancer can present in a myriad of ways. So the key is to understand what's normal for your breast. Examine your breast lying down while the breast is dry and examine all parts of the breast. And also examine the breast in the shower when you have soap and water on your fingers, which help you feel things sometimes that you don't feel when the breast is dry. And again, please seek evaluation if you find something that's changed or different. The vast majority of breast masses or lumps are benign, but we do want you to seek medical attention. And of course, mammography is important. During the pandemic, many women have foregone their mammogram and we're seeing later stages of diagnosis of breast cancer. So please, please do not bypass your mammogram during these times. Healthcare facilities are taking great caution 
and precautions to keep you safe from the pandemic from COVID. And speak with your healthcare provider regarding how frequently you should get your mammograms, when to start screening, as well as when to stop screening. So I hope these tips are helpful to you. And again, I send my best to all the breast cancer survivors and their supporters who are out here watching. Thank you. I'm happy to partner with Dr. Halliard and my other colleagues to work to extend the wonderful work that they have done with CBBC, both in the community and in partnership with the community in advocating, educating, and supporting our breast cancer patients and the community. We hope to be a resource for our community and support for our friends and family members surviving prostate cancer. Prostate cancer has a significant impact on our community. It's expected that one in seven African-American men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer, and African-American men are more likely to be diagnosed with prostate cancer and more than two times likely to die from prostate cancer than white men. In fact, it's the second leading cause of death in African-American men. Additionally, African-American men are more likely to be diagnosed at more advanced disease. As with breast cancer, early detection is key and can save lives. In fact, men with early stage disease have a five-year survival near 100%. That significantly changes in more advanced disease. With distant disease, only 30% of men surviving at five years. Although there are variations in screening recommendations, it's generally felt that men at least by 45, and some men as early as 40, should have a conversation with their doctor about screening. Screening for prostate cancer includes a simple blood test called a PSA, as well as a digital rectal exam, which can be performed by your provider in the privacy of the clinic. If an abnormality is identified, a biopsy may be recommended. It's important to follow up on any abnormal findings because there are a lot of treatments available. And as we mentioned, if treated early, survival is quite good. When a gentleman is diagnosed with prostate cancer, it is very important to speak with doctors who specialize in this area. There are many treatment options available and it is important for men to speak with doctors who specialize in this area to review all the possible choices and help determine the best choice for each individual. Regular exercise, maintaining a healthy weight, and eating a heart-healthy diet can help reduce your risk for all cancers, and specifically prostate cancer. Most importantly, I'd like you to know that Coalitions of Blacks Against Prostate Cancer is here for you. Wilson, and I am a self-taught artist and also a two-time breast cancer survivor. I started painting as therapy when I was first diagnosed with uh, breast cancer back in 2002. And I was devastated. I'd like to share with you uh, a short story that I wrote. I wrote my feelings down uh, after I was told I had breast cancer. So I entitled it, The Journey. You have cancer. What do you want to do? How do you feel? We must take a part of you that you have grown accustomed to. I asked myself, how attached am I to this muscle which fed my babies? Does it make me more of a woman? I fear for my life, my world. Will I be lost without it? Does it define who I am? Can I, will I, let go of what is familiar to me? Take it from me so I may see who I truly am, so I can live fully and feel my joy. God breathes life into me. He makes me whole. This is his gift to me. Thank you, God, for showing me my sunshine and my rainbows. You have shown me just how precious life as I know it can be. After getting through that, I started painting. Uh, I couldn't even draw stick people, so 
I took a class at Tippie Parks and Rec and I decided that maybe I have some hidden talent. So I was, I didn't have hidden talent. At least I didn't think I did. I was told to buy a book called How to Draw What You See. I bought the book and started drawing what was in my head and not what the instructor wanted me to draw. And people started loving my art. And then fast forward 13 years, 11 years later, I was diagnosed with breast cancer again. And I wrote my journey too. The fear that left me helpless in 2002 has come back to the forefront of my life once again. You have breast cancer. Each stage of my life is a story being told, each chapter different from the one before. The journey was a chapter unwanted. God removed that chapter and gave me a new story to tell. He gave me rainbows after the storm. Now, 11 years later, you have breast cancer. I hear a voice, fear not, for I am God. My soul finds peace in God alone. I dance and God's love for me is the music. I fear not, my soul is happy. That's my story. As a result of my uh, breast cancer journey, uh, I decided that I needed to do something that reflected uh, that journey that would, would appeal to other survivors. And so I drew this painting um, and the significance of it is the underlying of the breast and I, I threw a man in there because men get breast cancer also. But I, um, I thought it was significant enough to those who are survivors, to those who have, didn't make it, uh, but it, it's, it is significant to me. And the, and the title of the picture is Survivors. And uh, I'm really proud of that. And hope you are too. But that's my... Uh, that my journey inspired me to paint this picture. I'm Marlene Wilson and the Coalition of Blacks Against Breast Cancer need your support. Hopefully you all are enjoying the program so far. Here now to delight us is a young man whose musical talent is inspiring. Please enjoy the harmonica melody of Julian Davis.
Oh, that was beautiful, Julian. Thank you so much. And now we will continue with two more survivors and a caregiver. Please welcome Madeline Thomas and Charla and Carl Clico. Hello, family, friends, and community. My name is Madeline K. Thomas, and I have been a supporter of the Coalition of Blacks Against Breast Cancer for approximately nine years. Prior to moving to Arizona, I worked in Illinois, where I was a clinical research coordinator, and I worked with breast cancer patients specifically. And while I was working with those breast cancer patients, I participated in various organizations raising funds for patients with breast cancer to uh, contribute to research and to education. And when I moved to Arizona, I wanted to do that same thing. I wanted to leave the field of coordination, but I wanted to continue my volunteer work in the community that I was moving to. So I did research and I found this organization called Coalition of Blacks Against Breast Cancer, also known as CBBC. And I found that they were more unique than the organizations that I previously worked with. And I found that they work specifically with uh, African Americans and women of color. So I wanted to become engaged with that organization. So I just went right in and they accepted me in like family and I've been volunteering with them ever since. Uh, through my volunteer work, I have had the opportunity to work in the community, go out to health fairs, to other community events, and I would do volunteer work where I would pass out information, uh, giving people information on things that they should know about breast cancer and what they can do to prevent the bre breast cancer. So in that work, I've come to have a, a second family here in Arizona, and they take you with open arms. They have the ability to communicate with people like no other that I've seen here in Arizona. They've been so helpful to people with breast cancer. They have monthly meetings where they have support, where you can come in and talk about different things that are going on with you. And they may have some of those answers for you. And if they don't have those answers, they have resources that they can get to you to get those answers that you need. They are definitely a support. They provide education and they provide uh, resources where they have people come in to assist people. They have educational programs. They have those monthly meetings on top of the uh, support. They have physicians and different people come in and talk about things that you uh, experience while you're in treatment, outside of treatment, how to handle different things, what you can do better with your eating habits and things like that, exercise, and just give you different ways to cope with what you're going through. And me as a supporter, I really love working and talking with these ladies. They all have unique experiences and with uh, African-Americans, they uh, have a higher rate of dying because they don't know, you know what's happening. And they tend to get uh, diagnosed in a later stage. So that's the coalition. They, they do what they can to make sure everybody's aware. You need to do your self checks. You need to know your body. You need to be an advocate for yourself when you go into the doctor. And once you get that diagnosis, you might need a support person. Sometimes you don't have that support at home, but the Coalition of Blacks Against Breast Cancer can provide that support. And all you have to do is call. And they have it online now. You don't actually have to come in. You can join the group via Facebook and get that same information. And get that support. Hi, my name is Sharla. I am a five-year breast cancer survivor. I have with me my better half, Carl. He's 
the most amazing caregiver and supporter um, that anyone could ask for. I was diagnosed with HER2 positive, um, stage three plus breast cancer. I underwent six months of chemo followed by a bilateral mastectomy as well as radiation. Um, CBBC was with me through my entire journey and they were an amazing support. They allowed me a safe space to um, learn, to share, to cry, to laugh, um, to grow, and just to really navigate through the journey. Um, they had been a, and still are an amazing support system to me and my family. Um, Carl can share what caregiving meant yeah. to him and how CBBC. Um, from the from the caregiver's perspective, CBBC is uh, fantastic. You know, it gives uh, genuine support. You know, genuine information. Um, it's uh, faithless, and what I mean by that is, you know, you don't have to be black. You know, cancer is colorless. It attacks everyone, and CBBC helps everyone. You know, so if you support CBC with your energy, it won't be wasted. If you support CBC with your money, it won't be wasted. It's a fantastic organization, and I advise anyone who is going through this type of a journey to uh, come on out and uh, help out. And now, to honor breast cancer survivors everywhere, to execute the pink glove presentation to those who have battled breast cancer and won. I'm here to tell you about the Pink Glove Survivor Campaign. If you are interested in supporting one of our members or a person that you love who is a breast cancer survivor or in memory of that individual, there's an opportunity for you to do so. We're looking for a contribution of $500. That can be from an individual or that can be collective. $500 will award that survivor a set of pink gloves acknowledging that they're staying in the fight. You will be awarded a set of pink gloves if it's in memorial to your loved one of the fight that they fought. And it was valiant for as long as they survived. Please, if it's you individually or you, your family, and your loved ones who collectively support a survivor, do so by going to cbbcaz.org and there will be special instruction for you to make your contribution in memory or in honor of your loved one. Dr. Eula Saxon-Dean is a prominent figure in the Phoenix community. She is a retired education administrator and a community advocate, and she is here now with a very important message. Thank you. I am honored to participate in today's appeal on behalf of the Coalition of Blacks Against Breast Cancer. Imagine. I can only imagine a world filled with peace, a place where love abides, a place where healing is commonplace, where you and I get to decide where we play and rest and reside. I can only imagine where we are appreciated for our talents and gifts for learning and creating, where we're willing to support the needs of those who come with open hearts, looking for healing from the pain of not knowing, of poverty, disease, and despair. Yet somewhere in the midst of eager servants, we find the weary tears of joyful healers opening doors for the newness of fresh receiving. I can only imagine the extension of God's grace that's given to the many lives worth living because you and I are blessed and giving as we offer caring and thankful hearts to those in need that we never imagined. So today we start anew as we imagine and build a world filled with bonds of love. And we all can thrive in homes where the healthy and cancer-free are alive. 
I humbly ask you now to believe that your financial gift is needed as we help the worthy mission serving families in our black community. I can only imagine what you and I can do. I can only imagine my world with you. There are many ways that you can join us in the fight against cancer. To make an online donation to CBBC or CBPC, please visit cbbcaz.org. We also have a text to give option that makes donating even easier for you. Simply text CBBCAZ to 44 321. And if you would like to mail in your donation, we will gladly accept checks at our mailing address 4949 East Van Buren, number 68092, Phoenix. Arizona, 85082. Stick around with us. I can imagine you will see and hear this number again. So stay tuned for more information. Enjoy your evening and thanks for joining us. We are almost at the end of the program, but we want to leave you with an upbeat, soulful rendition of jazz. Please stay tuned to hear saxophone player Mario Jazz. He is sure to delight your senses. Thank mm -hmm. you. 